All right. Let's get this out of the way first. The thoughts, views, and opinions expressed on Tailboard Talks Firefighter Podcast are solely those of the speakers, guests, and host, and do not in any way represent the thoughts or views or opinions of any other employer, partnership, or sponsor. The material and information in this podcast is for general information purposes only and should be used at the listener's discretion. Here comes the intro. Skip forward 30 seconds if you want to get right to the episode. This is the Tailboard Talk Podcast, the best health, wellness, and lifestyle resource for the fire service. We're using stories, lessons, and tips from the front lines to give a realistic view of what the job can do to us and how we can make it out alive. I'm Chris Morella, a firefighter since 03, medic since 05, full-time since 08, and promoted to lieutenant in 20. I'm also a personal trainer and strength coach, and I'm here to give you the best information and host the best discussions to make us capable and durable, both on the job and away from it. So grab a heater, steal some fancy creamer from First Shift, and let's go chat. So there I was, sitting in my office, searching, searching for the recording that Kurt and I had just done about 45 minutes earlier. Now I was up in my office doing it because it was a lull in the day. Katie was making some banana bread muffins. Nathan was on the couch watching a show. He was very tired from school, needed a break and a, a snack and a show, as he likes to say, and needed to relax a little bit. So I went upstairs, going to start editing. And man, the look in my eyes when I could not find this file. I don't know what happened. I checked it several times while Kurt and I were recording. There was no question that it was recording. I remember specifically it was 38 minutes long, and we talked about how it would be about 20 minutes long because a solid 15, 16 minutes where it was just his dog Sadie running around and knocking in the stuff while we were recording and us laughing. So there I was. Katie came upstairs, asked how it was going. I said, it's not. The recording isn't there. She looked at me and backed away slowly and closed the door, which I appreciated. But then I put an Instagram poll up. What do you want to hear? Because I am at a breaking point. I got to work tomorrow. I can't record again with Kurt. Uh, We're down to the wire here. And that's just the way it goes, right? I thought I was getting ahead of it. I'm going to do it uh, in the afternoon, so I don't have to do it at night. I don't have to worry about it when I'm on shift. And look what happens. I mean, thank goodness I did. Thank God for me. Uh, being so smart and thinking ahead by a day. Let's not be <laughs> too congratulatory here. But open it up on Instagram. So what do you guys want tonight? Do you want a uh, repeat of a favorite episode or would you like a quick solo? And I got to say thank you because a majority of you guys said quick solo. Appreciate that. Like a lot. Either that means you don't like any of the past episodes you're hoping for better or you just don't absolutely hate these solo episodes, which means the world to me. So then, I went and asked for some topics, topics for the solo. Let me read off some of these things, because some of them are fantastic, and I'm going to tell you which one I picked, which is what we're going to talk about. Let's see here. Um, we have, how do firefighter functional workouts, how to do them without losing size and mass? The next one was cold plunges. The next one was favorite dinner recipes, and then sprinting benefits, and then how... Duty workouts should differ from your normal workout, uh, stretching and flexibility versus PBs, personal bests, I believe. And the last one, probably my favorite that we should be doing, uh, how you can roll a teeny scoop of ice cream into a fruit roll-up and it turns into a crispy lol burrito. I mean, to try that out. I'm not sure how, like it sounds like a good idea, but then I think about cold fruit roll-up taffy. Feels a lot like it's going down the Butterfinger lane of like, cold taffy stuck in your teeth kind of thing, but I'm willing in the name of science. Now, I also got a DM from Annette Zapp, and she said, hey, don't forget we're starting Spring for Change in a couple weeks. Why don't you do a quick episode on Spring for Change, just a little preview thing? And that made me think, hey, duh. I I heard this a long time ago. Maybe you guys know where it's from, or maybe you've heard it before about how the brains of men work differently than the brains of women, right? And I don't remember how the women's brains work, obviously. Uh, It's probably the exact opposite of the men's, if I had to guess. But the way they described the men's brain was you take things that are all related to each other or categories of things, and you put them in a box. And you can visualize these boxes. Put all the things that relate to that in a box, and when you need it, you go open that box. And then when you're done with it, you close that box and you put it back on the shelf and then you go open the box of whatever else you're getting into, right? And then you close that one, put it back on the shelf, go to the next thing. So really at no time is there more than one box open. Um, that could not be a more accurate representation of how I operate. I was in podcast stuff 
I never once thought about spring for change stuff. And when I'm doing spring for change stuff, I'm not thinking about force shift stuff. And I'm not thinking about, it's just so segregated in my brain that like, yeah, obviously I have this podcast and I'm doing spring for change again for like the fourth year. Why wouldn't I be talking about it? Now, I also had another uh, visualization of how my brain works the other day. Uh, while I was talking to some fans of the show, and I'm just kidding, just kidding, I was talking to some people who had occasionally listened, and I said, you remember when you used to watch the lottery on the news, and they had that enormous dome, like that plexiglass dome, and the air would go into it, and it had like a, a million and a half ping, balls, ping pong balls inside, and then they would open the trap door at the top, and one would shoot up the top, and that was the one, right? I said, that's my brain. I got all these ping pong balls rattling around and at any given time, one of these lottery balls is going to knock to the surface and that's what I'm going to be doing. It's a complicated thing. Anyways, today, uh, I'm going to give you a few updates on a few things. It's going to be a quick-ish episode, uh, but hopefully it gets a little jazz going for what we got in the works here. So first of all, I'm trying out a new heart rate monitor. I haven't posted much about it. I posted that I received it the other day. It's from the Fourth Frontier Company. If you want to look at on Instagram, it's Fourth underscore Frontier. And this thing is pretty cool. I used it today for a bike ride um, and yesterday for a workout. The difference between this heart rate monitor and other ones so far, as it seems, one of their big selling points is that it gives you lead two. It gives you a real-time EKG uh, and also will track up to 24 hours of EKG. So you push the little start button on it, and then it starts recording. And it says up to 24 hours. I assume that the battery life will last that long too. In any case, it's very fast charging. To go from like 80 to 100% took about five, six minutes. So it's very fast charging. But I figured that would be a really cool tool to try out. It also gives you your respirations, uh, obviously your heart rate, um, uh, like a, a strain score, essentially four or five other things, uh, heart rate variability is in there. So very cool stuff. I'm going to be trying out this thing for the next three months or so. And then I have a meeting with them and we're going to talk about, um, kind of the future of what I can do with the company and all that. So be on the lookout for stuff, that stuff. It's going to be very cool. And I'm already very impressed by the data that it's giving. Okay. Also, I've told you guys about the affiliate links on, um, the, for the show before, right? Don't forget we have rescue on CBD. Use code, code tailboard, uh, and it gives you 15% off. Now I also got a code for athletic brewing. I guess they're not doing those too much anymore. I was able to get a 10% off code for new customers to athletic brewing. So if you go to athletic brewing and enter the code TTFP for the tailboard talks, firefighter podcast, TTFP 10, that's TTFP 10, um, 10% off your first order as a new customer. So check it out. I mean, it's, that's not bad. That's not bad. They also have some standing deals on there, free shipping over X amount. Um, they got some other stuff on there too. I'm going to try to be getting more into them also because I tell you what, I said up on here before, I, maybe I talked about it enough. I like the non-alcoholic beer thing now. I'm really kind of starting to latch on to it pretty heavy. So check those out. It, it will support the show. It's a little bit of kickback to the show, but you can also get some cool stuff that can benefit you. Okay. Let's talk about Spring for Change. Now, if you've been listening for a while, I mean, the show's been on for a few years now. You've probably heard about Spring for Change. I just put up a graphic the other day that was Spring for Change-esque in the same vein, uses most of the same terminology, but a different kind of visualization for it. It was a ladder. It was a firefighter wellness ladder, and it had sleep on a rung, and then it had nutrition on a rung, and then it had uh, stress reduction and exercise as the beams of the ladder. And I said it's on purpose that... Uh, you know, sleep is one of the lowest rungs on this thing. Like you need that to be your foundation. Without that one, you're not moving forward. You're not getting on the ladder. Then the nutrition was the next one up. Obviously paramount for any kind of uh, athletic or occupational performance. And then we had stress reduction on one side and fitness on the other side. And the caption basically said like maintain three points of contact. Like you can do a lot with three points of contact. You can even carry some stuff along on that stress reduction side. You can carry a little bit of extra and still make some progress. But if you have two points of contact, now we're in dangerous territory for moving forward. You probably stand still, be relatively steady for a little bit until a big gust of wind comes or something like that, or someone else starts climbing it and shaking for you. Um, But three points of contact can keep moving forward. Two points of contact, you're standing still. And one, you're probably on your way off that thing. So just another way to think about this stuff. Now, Spring for Change came about. It uses uh, similar pillars of that. It uses mindfulness, nutrition, fitness, and also sleep. Uh, I didn't almost forget it. I was just trying to... Anyways, that came about because Annette and I did Devote December for a handful of years. 
and Devote December was all about honoring those firefighters who had taken their own lives over the previous year and then using that number of firefighters who were confirmed to have committed suicide and putting it to action. So let's say uh, at the end of the year, 120 firefighters had committed suicide. Every day in December, we would do 120 of something, and then we would monitor that number. If it went up, we would raise the number of our action thing for the day. So we did that, and it was um, hugely beneficial, we believe. Then we decided that aside from an awareness campaign, we would like an educational campaign also. So we decided on spring because statistically speaking, uh, the number one months for suicide in general population are actually the spring months, not the winter months. And there's a host of different theories why. Uh, in any case, that seems to be where the information lies there is in the spring months that there's more suicides than ever. So we said, all right, let's do something in the spring. We got our catchy name generated together. And we decide on spring for change. Now, spring is an action. It's also the time of year. Four is the number four. It's the fourth month. There's four pillars. Oh my goodness, are we so clever? And then change, we're hoping to train to change stuff on both the micro and the macro level, right? Within the individual and also bring attention to this stuff, educate the fire service and make us all better. Sounds lofty, sounds a little, I don't want to say egotistical or big of us to think we can, but I mean, we all know that change starts with each individual and then the greater change comes from the group, right? So that's all we're trying to do. Give some information on these four major pillars of wellness and hopefully you're better off in the end. So this year, all right. This year, oh, obviously one major part of this that kind of goes with saying all these major pillars that we're going to be going over for the month, we're going to tie back to mental health. So this is all a mental health initiative. Um, and everything we give you over the course of the month is going to be tied back to how it supports your mental health and how you can draw on these things later if you need a support in your mental health. So that's the entire purpose of this thing. It's not just to give you workouts to do. It's to give you workouts to do that can help you if you're in a jam and you need, I hate to say like raise the good hormones, but um, if you need a little endocrine boost, or you need something to help you out of a spot and know that exercise is a good stimulus for you, we can give you the resources for a responsible workout that you can do that. If you know that your sleep is lacking and you know your mental health is suffering, and that's going to be able to give you a lot of resources on why sleep and improving it or ways to improve it or suggestions on how to incrementally improve it can help your mental health and get you out of a tough spot, hopefully, right? We're not doctors. Uh, she's a scientist. We're just trying to do some good. Okay. So obviously consult your physician, all the normal disclaimers, all that stuff, but hopefully some very low hanging fruit for you guys coming up in the month, some very accessible and uh, immediately deliverable and usable information. That's what we're going for. So this month, Annette, sorry, in the month of spring for change, which is next month, right? April, January, February, March, April, the fourth month. Does anybody else do that every single time they count? Like when if I'm on a, pay, on a call and the patient says August, I have to count. I'm like, ah, oh, crap, um, to find out that it's eighth, not eight, right? We'll just pretend it is. Um, anyways, and that's going to be doing sleep and nutrition. She's done several talks now, multiple talks on sleep, um, and nutrition is kind of her thing. It is not my, more so, though. More importantly, it's not my thing. I rely on Katie to feed me. Um, and feed me responsibly. Otherwise, it would not be so great. And I will be taking care of fitness and mindfulness. Now, those are two kind of broad topics, right? But I'm going to focus primarily on giving you workouts and methods to deregulate or downregulate, I should say, your CNS. Uh, I'm also going to give you stuff that brings you up a little bit and can give you the boost you need or kind of jumpstart the feel-good chemicals. Uh, And then with mindfulness, that's a tough one, right? Because it means it means one specific thing, but it means a lot of things to a lot of people. So I'm just going to touch on the basics of that and give you some uh, very fundamental exercises to do. Tap into my friend Wendy Lund a ton and get you guys some good deliverables. They can get you started or at least get you familiar with where you can start with mindfulness. I don't, I'm not going to make it scary. Believe me, I don't like facing that stuff any more than anyone else does. I'm going to make it very accessible and hopefully very user-friendly um, for you guys to take action on that stuff. So... You can expect that each week, now it's not going to take over the podcast necessarily, but I'm definitely going to mention it each week and each week's going to be a different topic, right? So week one may isn't week one and two are next weeks. She's going to do sleep and nutrition in any order she wants. And then weeks three and four, fitness and mindfulness, probably in that order, to be honest with you. Uh, but that's what you have to look forward to for the month of April. I'm very excited for it. We gave up Devote December to Matt Spade this past year and he did a phenomenal job with it, but it was just something that Annette and I just could not um, we just couldn't 
put the effort into it that we really wanted to. But we knew it was a hugely beneficial thing. We got a lot of great feedback on it, so we wanted to keep it going. And Matt Spade was gracious enough just to accept it. And then he took it, ran from, ran, ran with it, um, took it and ran with it, and really did a great job. So thank you, Matt, for doing that. Uh, let's make this a quick one. I mean, we tried. I tried to do one with Kurt today. We did. Uh, so it's actually really a really good talk. We talked about being okay with people not liking you and you not liking people. And essentially how it's okay if you don't get along with everyone. But we also talked about like, well, how, here's this dynamic and what's your expectations from an officer and what, what are my expectations from the crew if we have someone that comes in and kind of rocks the boat. And uh, here's, some, here's some tactics that we both use to get through the day if we know we're working with just a, you know, a person that's incompatible with our crew or with our personality. So we went into it. We also went into another poll that I put up. Uh, we're going to start doing these little debate series, I think, where we take two things that we don't like and try to prove which one is the lesser of two evils, which one is the best of the worst. So I put up a poll up the other day. It said, what's the best of the worst? What's the lesser of two evils for firefighters? Is it intermittent fasting or is it keto? Now, if you've listened to this, you know that we kind of rip on both of them. Keto is really like the punching bag for our for our nutritional uh, abuse. We beat up on keto and keto followers to no end. However, and this goes against the poll results, I was surprised. A bunch of people said intermittent fasting was lesser of two evils for firefighters. Now, I don't know if that means in general. I was thinking on shift. I'll be honest with you. So on shift, I would say that keto is a better choice than intermittent fasting. But a lot of people said intermittent fasting. So what we're going to do is we're each going to build a case for the one that we're assigned. And unfortunately, I think I'm going to have to defend intermittent fasting and Kurt is going to defend keto. And then I said, well, let's move it. Let's use movements too. There's a couple of movements we really don't like. We cut them out of our gym when we were running the gym, or out of Kurt's gym, uh, a little slip there. So we're going to debate which is the lesser of two evils, sit-ups or kipping pull-ups. Now, we don't like either of those two movements, but we're going to force ourselves to defend one and, and give you guys a little entertainment on that. So it's something that's coming up. Uh, look forward to that. We have a few uh, few more to brainstorm and, and get ready for, but I'll put those polls up kind of frequently and see which ones you guys think are the lesser of two evils or the best of the worst for firefighters, and we'll, uh, we'll have some fun with that. All right. Go to the affiliate links on the show notes. Go on the website. Check them out. Use code TAILBOARD at Rescue1CBD for 15% off and use TTFB10 for athletic, athletic brewing for 10% off. Um, and stay tuned. More Fourth Frontier heart rate monitor info coming at you guys soon. Pretty excited about that. All right. As always, keep trying to be or keep working towards. Man, I sound like Katie. Like I forget my own tagline. Keep working towards being more capable and durable both on shift and away from it. We'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.